Lessons from Sudan. In the morning of the 15th of April, 2023, the world woke up to the news of open armed conflict in the city of Khartoum, capital of Sudan, between rival factions within the government of Sudan. The conflict is escalating and threatens to explode into a full-scale civil war. To be sure, Sudan is no stranger to war. It seems to have walked into conflict soon after its birth in 1956, when its then southern parts, unhappy with lack of autonomy, went to war. Many years after, and at the price, amongst other things, of an estimated 2 million dead, southern Sudan eventually emerged as an independent state in 2011. And its own internal conflicts promptly began. Nigeria has a human stake in the happenings in Sudan. Many Nigerians go for their education, sometimes sponsored by state governments. Beyond this, technically, Sudan has always been a refuge for Nigerians. If Section 25 of the Constitution is so badly read, it must not be forgotten, for one, that the children and followers of the last Sultan of Sokoto, before the conquest of the Sokoto Empire by the British, Mohammed Atiru I, lived there and called it home. In many respects, our pre- and post-colonial histories are not dissimilar. There are lessons to be drawn from their experience. The first one. Many years after independence, the fact is still not recognized that our nations were arbitrarily comparable together by our colonizers, leaving ethnic fissures that require understanding and careful handling. There can be no sustainable development without peace, but sustainable peace will not be guaranteed by fiat and the martial boots. There must be a continuous and sincere discussion and bargains for the best arrangement of power that will move our nations forward. Here, there have been much discussion on restructuring, some sincere, some in contempt. But what we must see is that serious attention should be paid to it. Secondly, in general, we must do everything to limit foreign interference in our domestic politics. Every nation, like every human being, has its own interest. Implicated in Sudan's crisis is the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Russia, even the EU, which provided funding to a faction there to police a fence against a wave of immigration. This is, of course, not a license to roll out the artillery against citizens who seek foreign aid against oppression. To the contrary, it is an admonition to leaders to avoid creating the conditions that promote helplessness and the sense of oppression and injustice that leads to these interventions by constantly and sincerely taking into account the desires of all their people and not only some. Thirdly, there is a need for African nations, including Nigeria, to develop the capacity of their states to assume full control of the mining and trade of natural resources. One of the factional heads involved in this crisis owns gold mines. The oil, the oil bunkering now prevalent here is the cousin of the illegal mining of solid minerals. Sudan teaches us we should not thereby allow ordinary citizens and even foreign bandits to become de facto states unto themselves. Lastly, increasingly, the muscles of the African Union have grown flabby. Since the Arusha Accords that played a part in ending the Rwandan conflict, African leaders have largely stood by as the conflicts in the RC, Libya, Cameroon, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Mali, and others have festered. The EU needs to rediscover its mission, especially in the area of mediation and peer-to-peer -peer review of its leaders. Hmm. This is really... <laughs> you know what caught my attention there was the African Union. Yes. The conflict in Cameroon. I remember in 2019, I traveled to Cameroon via the sea from Oran. Took a speedboat to Cameroon. When I got there, it was not really very pleasant. Uh, the people are generally nice, but the situation at that time was, there was war, civil yes, war. Yes, 
between, so, between the English yeah, speaking parts. The Ambazonian, what they call them, the yeah. English and the French. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. So at that point, at some point, I was harassed at the border, uh, close to the border, because yes. I, I, I was trying to converse, have conversation with a French speaking military officer. She's a, fem a woman, a woman, she, I think one of the, is it gender marine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, gender marine. She was not very fluent in speaking English. I was not very speaking, speaking French. And I was trying to talk yeah, to her. Gender. She could not understand, she didn't really understand where I was coming from. Okay. And I was going back to Nigeria. And I was rough handled <laughs> just because of that. Yes. And you know what, the excuse, the, look at one silly thing they said that really broke my heart was that, um, you know, the country is at war. Uh, we can just label you as one of the troublemakers. I was like, what's the meaning of mm, that? Mm. Like, as we Africa, have we gone to this level? Mm, mm, mm. Killings in Cameroon. Yes. And the, they won't allow foreign press, especially, not even the press, mm. to even capture anything. Mm. And yes, African Union will sit down there and be having general assemblies. What are they discussing yeah. in the general assemblies? Yeah. Yeah. The conflicts in, uh, in Ethiopia was one. And thank God, Olusegu Obasanjo was able to uh, chairman the mm -hmm. peace deal but mm -hmm. you know we should not wait for outsiders to come and solve our problem as Africa we yeah. can do more yeah let's muzzle up African I, Union has a lot to I, offer I agree the, up. the conflict in DRC for, for instance for me is very shameful I mean you and this is one of the misgivings I have about Kigami because you virtually have one small African state twisting in in its tops, a bigger African state, yeah. you know, and all that. You have other regional countries involved. These are countries controlled by the same leaders in the African Union that should be making the peace. At a point, you remember, there was a point in their country where even South Africa was involved. Hmm. It's a shame. Yeah. It's a Very shame. Very big shame. Yeah. It's a big shame. These are the things we should see down in Africa. As we go into after, NAFTA and all that, and we are trying sure. to do free trade, I wish you would think about and talk about seriously. We can't go on like this. This can't go on forever. The assignment but, we are giving them is African Union, try to foster unity and peace yes. amongst African Within, nations. Yes. Yeah. Real integration, yeah. economic integration. You know, mm -hmm. um, we can become a very strong economic block to the world. It's not yeah. that every time there is problem in Africa or there is problem in the world, you see different world powers. Russia, US, China, they will come and start picking different states and start giving them something. I want to use yeah, and influence you. So in like, in like fact, this, I'm, this happy, I'm happy you've mentioned it because I, actually that's what's happening in Africa now. You see above us in the Maghreb, you hear the Russian Wagner group mm. is always there. Some say it's even in Nigeria here and that some of the clashes you see yeah. for uh, all these uh, bandits and all that. Even are motivated by them because they were accusing France that they are. Yes, because yeah. where there's confusion, they can mine more. Mm. You see um, what happened in uh, Sudan. The man owned a gold mine. The, the, One of the generals. The, the general that is causing the... Is he the president or the vice president? No, no, no the vice president. The vice president. He owns, yeah. And he's fighting the president. Exactly. He you owns, see, the problem with Sudan was that the both of them could knife to remove the president then. Exactly. And what's his name again? Yeah, his, exactly. his name has, He actually set up these two generals yeah. so that he will remain in power. One will fight one. He gives him the one to so, remove so it. The team teamed up so, and removed so, so, so Now they are fighting themselves. So, so what I'm saying is, the point I was making with that was, look, don't let individuals be bigger than the states. Oh. We see Government also, should be of laws. We talk of privatization, but let us be careful. And that's one of the lessons I was saying we should draw in Nigeria. Let us be careful that we would not move into oligarchy. Yeah. Mm. Where that's the few privileged few. Exactly. Yeah. Where the state is actually controlled by individuals yeah, the and the individuals are stronger than the government yes and I, like we should exactly. build strong institutions that will at least exactly, any human. exactly. Not, the other way around. Uh, not the other way around no. so, so these, these are the lessons you 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 can have states if, if, if for instance someone corners the oil in nigeria you imagine what that person virtually owns nigeria mm. Mm. it's a, a, it's yeah. a cautionary tale that yeah. may be happening <laughs> so, yeah. well, what I'm going to say in all of this is, I think oftentimes the enemy is within. Yes. Yeah. Right? The enemy that we're fighting is within, yes. and not without. If you can conquer the enemy within, then it's easier to, again, picking back to what I said earlier, 
putting up a solid front. Mm -hmm. We must conquer the enemy within. Mm -hmm. We must conquer ourselves. Mm -hmm. We must conquer our self-centeredness. Mm -hmm. We must come together as much as, I mean, politics is played everywhere virtually, mm -hmm. yes. even in the United yes. States yes. and all of that. But there is an approach, mm -hmm. right? You know, they t there's always that, you know, there's, I mean, I've been seeing some of these um, um, U.S. government um, um, political series mm -hmm. on Netflix, mm -hmm. right? When you see how they govern, there's always that thin line they are not going to go beyond. You know, this is where we draw the line on mm -hmm. this, right? So there's this balance, you know, in their political approach, where mm -hmm. most of them. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, when you look at Africa, we don't even value the value of a human life is almost next to mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. The it's value of a of human people. life. Mm -hmm. What did you say? It's a piece of bread to yeah. some people. Give yeah. them a piece of bread and they kill some people. So it's the value of a human life is like this, you know, it's just like any, you just throw it away and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to come back again to mm -hmm. our values. I, 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 and I also want to go to one extreme. If you look at the past history of Europe and wars and all that, you'll notice that the wars were fight, fought by leaders to benefit not themselves but the states. The state, yeah. If you look at Napoleon, if you look at Bismarck, Napoleon even France. if you look at the Hitler you mentioned, mm. he was not that. fighting so that he could become rich. But yeah. Was, that's well, the problem in Sudan. Means fighting. Uh, that, that was leadership, but of course in uh, the reverse. But uh, I mean, that's leadership. Yeah, that's leadership. That's uh, leadership. Uh, there's a negative Osama part. Bin Laden is a leader. Exactly. So, <laughs> so they, they are fighting for their state, for not for course. themselves. Yeah. For something yeah. bigger, than, bigger than them. Yeah. This is what Africans need we to develop. We must think beyond uh, you know, exactly, our pockets, exactly. And, yeah. and of course, like you said, build a global institution. Yeah, something exactly. that will outlive. If Napoleon was fighting for himself, he would probably have been the richest man in the world. But he wasn't that was, was, was something was, I still want us to drop in our consciousness and to our viewers out there, including government listening, African Union members of Afri member states of African Union. How come um, we have beautiful countries like Egypt? Yeah, Egypt. They always call them Middle East and North Africa. Middle East mm. and North Africa. Mm. Why? Mm. I'm not saying it's, it's wrong to form. Anybody can form their own economic block, but notwithstanding. Yeah. Can we associate more with Africans? And Morocco too is the same. Yeah, they are always wanting to be referred to as Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> we want to associate with Saudi Arabia. Well, they so come play African but when it comes to Africa, they don't, they, they don't want to be associated. There is something good. Well, like we are Africans. Like when it's something bad, we are not Africans. Once free trade no, becomes fantastic grow. here, everybody will. Once free trade also, becomes exactly, fantastic, everybody yeah. has to play their part. Uh, also, the president uh, of Egypt, uh, yes. Mohammed El Sisi, uh, yes. right? I, he should play his part. Every other president, including our yes. own president yeah. or the incoming president. Yeah. Well, you know, right now what is going on is that every African wants to go out, but perhaps we, when we are trading together and they, we see the benefit of trading with ourselves and moving together in the a collective and helping to solve our own problems. I mean, sometimes we, you see a country want to borrow money. Some of the money they want to borrow is not something that cannot be raised in a prosperous Africa. Mm, you, are raised, China, you, you are going, <laughs> you, you, China, you, you want to raise European 8 billion. Union, to if we come together, are we really saying $8 billion is not something we can borrow some sure. within ourselves? You know, uh, so... Where? Awesome. Uh, we'll get there. <laughs> okay. you, you, anybody can do whatever they want. Uh, to I think Ruto made meet, that point. Meet with whoever they want to meet, but more importantly, your uh, home. Yes. You should also make your home strong as yeah. much as you want to explore True. other yeah. continents, other country, other yeah. states. Exactly. Make your home strong. True. Africa is our home, so make it strong. So True. That's the idea. The end always seems to come too soon on advocates. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms. On Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash the advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station, let's keep advocating for a better society. Thank you.